Christ is risen. Christos was grasse. Welcome to Monday. Another day when we can hear what the Lord has to say for us, say to us. Pray God we will listen to Him and listen to Him all the time because every day our Lord speaks to us to build us up, to guide us, steer us in the right direction, comfort us when we need comforting, inspire us when we need guidance and inspiration to speak to us sometimes through other people, through thoughts and prayers, but also through his own word given to us for this purpose. Let us listen to the word of God today, the prescribed readings, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. Either follow along with me or listen very attentively. In those days, Paul and Silas took the road from Amphilonius to Apollonia and came to Thessalonica, where they went with where there was a Jewish synagogue, following his usual custom. And Paul joined the people there and conducted discussions with them about scriptures for three Sabbaths. He explained many things showing that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I have been telling you about is the Messiah. Some of the Jews were convinced and threw in their lot with Paul and Silas. So too did others. Yet a great number of Greeks, sympathetic to Judaism, and numerous prominent women. But this only aroused the resentment of the Jews, however, who engaged loafers from a public square to form a mob and start a riot in the town. They marched on the house of Jason in an attempt to bring Paul and Silas before the people's assembly. When they could not find them there, they dragged Jason himself and some of his brothers to the town magistrate, shouting, These men have been creating a disturbance all over the place. Now they come here, and Jason has taken them in to a man. They disregard the emperor's decrees and claim instead that this Jesus is the king. In this way they stirred up the crowd, and when the town magistrate heard the whole story, they released Jason and the others on bail. Well, did anything from the Lord touch your heart today? Paul and his companion were freed from prison, but they went to Salonica, preaching to a Jewish community there, and things actually went pretty well. A number of the Jews and a number of non-Jews were converted to the faith. They were invited to stay at a home of a man named Jason. Meanwhile, there was a group of people who objected to Paul's preaching and teaching. They went down to the public square and, well, they hired a band of thugs, no other way to put it, who were willing to go stir up trouble for money. Paul fled to another town, but the troublemakers followed him there. Jason, who showed Paul and and Timothy some kindness, he got himself in hot water. He was dragged before the magistrate. Friends, sometimes we, you and I, find ourselves in a position of being in the same kind of trouble as St. Paul and his companions. Of what touched my heart today. I think we were able to resonate with this gospel, with this, with this scripture reading. What about you? What struck your heart? You know what struck mine in a particular way? Is that sometimes, like St. Paul, the scripture tells us, avoided the rabble rousing crowd and slipped away. Sometimes we, you and I, might have to choose.
choose, as they say, our battles carefully. We have to know when to fight, when to retreat, to save a battle for another day. In, in other words, not to shy away from something, but know when to speak up with courage, honesty, and truth, and when to bridle our tongues, bide our time, so that we can later speak with courage, honesty, and truth. The book of Sirach always makes a great point of reminding us that certain things need to be done in the right time. If we think about that in our own lives, we can think that knowing the right time, when to speak up, when to pause and bridle our tongue, call on inner patience, is the need for discernment and wisdom. That comes from God. God will help us to know the right time and to give us the right words, to form the right thoughts in a discerning heart. Perhaps this is what God is tapping us on the shoulder to remind us of today in this reading. I'll be with you. I will help you. Call on me. I will inspire you. Just be still, be prayerful, and listen for the right time, the right words, at the right moment. Let's listen to the next reading. The reading that comes from the book of the Holy Gospels. It will be a reading from the Gospel of St. John. Chapter 11, verses 47 through 56. Read along with me, or listen attentively. At that time, the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin against Jesus. They said, What are we to do with this man, performing all sorts of signs? If we let him go on like this, the whole world will believe him. The Romans will then come and sweep away our sanctuary and our nation. One of their number, named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, addressed them at this point. You have no understanding whatsoever. Can you not see? that it is better for you to have one man die for the whole people than to have all the nation destroyed. He did not say this on his own. It was rather his high priest for that year that he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for this nation only, but to gather into one all the dispersed children of God. From that day onward, it was a plan afoot to kill Jesus. In consequence, the Jew Jesus no longer moved about freely in Jewish circles. He withdrew instead to a town called Ephraim, in the region near the desert, where he stayed with his disciples. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. This, friends, was a very significant moment. This, this reading that's describing a very significant moment in the life of our Lord. And you know, if you listen carefully to this reading, we get a glimpse, and I, I, I dare say this, I dare say this, we get a glimpse into the mind of a killer. I, I know that sounds dramatic, but, but this, this was the moment we just heard it in the scriptures. 
This was the moment when the plot to kill Jesus was being formulated. Speaking for others like-minded like him, Caiaphas, the high priest, said that it was, quote, better than one man to die for the people than the whole nation would perish. Jesus was a threat to them. They were afraid that because of Jesus and the embarrassment that he was causing them, that the Roman authorities who were overseeing them would take away their land and their nation. Jesus had to be eliminated, so they thought. When you were listening to this reading, friends, how did God speak to you? What touched your heart? What touched my heart was really what, what I just explained and what we just heard, the cynicism contained within this gospel of the authorities is really what struck my heart today. The high priest, when he said, it is better for one man to die and the whole nation perished. Individuals were compromised, even killed for a greater good. Do you think that's still true in anywhere in the world today? God looks at all of us into our hearts and sees very unique individuals, all of us. Perhaps the question to reflect on today is, are we able to do the same for one another? Perhaps our reading today is one in which God asks us and challenges us to see one another as the individuals they truly are, all created in the image and likeness of God himself. Perhaps even friends during this time of confinement, we might be called to get to know our loved ones and family and friends a bit better because we're spending so much more time with them. Maybe the call to get to know ourselves a bit better. To love ourselves a bit more. To see in ourselves and in one another the very image of the likeness of Christ. Maybe that's our opportunity during this particular time in the world's history. Even though we're all in very different backgrounds, the one thing that we all have in common is that we are all made. You and me, and all of us, in the image and likeness of God himself. That's truly what makes all of us brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's precisely why we can pray and lift up one another as brothers and sisters in our Lord, with prayer. Let us all pray together now for our brothers and sisters in Christ, especially for the dead and those who have recently died from this pandemic, including the unidentified souls of no one to pray for them. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the first responders, the EMS, the doctors, nurses, all medical personnel, food service personnel, retailers, farmers, grocers, truckers, delivery people, and all those who provide for our needs. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for our military personnel, our government officials, our civil authorities, the fire and police who serve us, the New Jersey National Guard, especially Father Francis, their chaplain, and all chaplains. Lord, have mercy. 
Let us pray with Sandy for her daughter Christine, a paramedic, for the Lord to keep her safe. Let us pray with Joni for her niece, Loretta, a nurse practitioner, for the Lord to keep her safe. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray with Charles for his special intention. Let us also pray with Melanie for good health intentions. And we pray with Georgia for the end of this pandemic. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray with Susan and Mary Ellen for the eternal memory of their Aunt Marie who fell asleep in the Lord. We pray also with Selena and Zachary for the blessed repose of Lainey who fell asleep in the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray with Andrea for her cousin Liz who fell asleep in the Lord. We pray with Diana and Ray for the eternal repose of Josephine who fell asleep in the Lord. And we pray with Andrea for all departed family members. Lord, have mercy. We pray with Barbara for traveling blessings upon Jim and Georgina, and we pray for the health of Clay's mother, Corinne, and we pray with Susan for the intentions of Mike. Lord, have mercy. We pray with Laura for the intentions of James and Mario. We pray with Anna for the intentions of her family. We pray with Andrea for the for special intention of herself and for that of her family. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the intentions of Adrian for God's protection and with Tim for safety and peace. We pray with Andrea for her departed loved ones and for the safety of us all. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the health of Father Marcel and Father John, for all of our priests, deacons, monks, and nuns, especially those exposed to or suffering from the coronavirus or serious illness. Lord, have mercy. We pray for Father Ed's mother, Betty, for her husband, Ken, and for the intentions of Millie, for Lucy, and her family. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the intentions of Dan, Dan, and Nancy, who are in need of prayer. Sylvia asks us for prayers for good health, for family, and for her brother. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the eternal memory of Dave's mom who fell asleep in the Lord from the virus. We also pray for the blessed repose of Patty's friend Jim who fell asleep in the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the intentions of Michelle for the safety of her family. We pray for the intentions of Maria for her niece Juliana. And for the intentions of Diana for James and his special intentions. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the intentions of Melanie and Katie for the living and departed members of their family. And we pray with Georgina for the safety and welfare of us all. Lord, have mercy. We continue to pray for one another, for those who have known to pray for them, and for your special intention. Please lift up your special intention that is deep within your heart, perhaps known only to you, and of course to God. Lift that up to Him, and let us ask our special prayer partners, our favorite saint, our patron saint, the saint after whom we were named, our guardian angel, our patron among the saints, Thomas the Apostle, patron of this holy church, and above all, the Holy Mother of God, given to us by our Lord Himself as our special prayer partner. Let us turn to her in blessed prayer, in song, and let us say, Be in your compassion, we did pray you. Deliver us from danger, for you 
put down your coffee cup, put down your bottle of water, put down the remote control or the TV guide, put everything down and stand up. And you know the reason why we stand in the Byzantine church is out of joy. So stand up for the singing of Christ is risen because we are still filled and lifted up with joy of the, of the I was going to say of the Christmas season. I did that the other day too, didn't I? Of the Easter season. You know, friends, this is, we're on the countdown to Ascension Thursday and Pentecost Sunday, so it's only a few more times we're going to sing Christ is Risen. So stir up all of that joy in your heart of the Easter season, and now let us sing. Christ is risen from the dead, by death he trampled death, unto those in the tombs he grafted life. Christos vos Christeis met be, smet Dios met potra, Jesus in porobi, Jevo taroba, Christ is risen from the dead, by death he trampled death, and to those in the tombs he granted life, and to us he granted life eternal. Let us bow before his resurrection on the third day. Christ is risen. God bless you.